literally this piece glows you can see it this angle in this video i want to talk about how i mix my paints these are actually pigments so how to turn my pigments into paints and we're going to talk about our iridescent and color shifting pigments and tricks to thicken them without changing the color so I'm going to show you the colors and all that stuff at the end. I'm just going to focus on the pigments for now. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also introducing three brand new pigments to the TLP line. Super excited. And this is a mixture of two brand new ones, okay? Wow. All right, so this is two parts Flamango and one part Crescendo. All right, these are color shifting pigments. It's hard to see in the container, but you can see, even though I have mixed them up, the color has retained pretty well. So mixing the two got me this really gorgeous, pinky, mauve, lavender color shift. In addition to this, there's another piggy, new piggy to the block, and this is unicorn. Really, really pretty. It too is a color shift. You can see by the glare from my light. It is like a blue, purple, pink color shift. Wow. So you can see that the color is spot on. You don't really lose any colors uh, with how I mix them, okay? Um, the only thing, they are slightly dull, but you will find the luster comes back as your painting dries. So let's talk about mixing these up so i need to disperse my pigment i know you've heard many many people talk about this and there are a couple of ways to disperse it so let me tell you i used one full heaping spoon of pigment so about this much of my pigment per each cup because i am doing a cloud pour we want we, we need to use a little more pigment now if i'm doing this for a bloom or another type of technique i won't use quite as much because i am uh, very light on my pigment use, um, simply because I don't want to use them all in just a couple pours. So when I pour it in, I want to disperse it with a little bit of clear gloss varnish. And I actually use a few drops of water. This is the only time in the process that I'm going to use some water because when I use my gloss gel medium, it kind of formulates a paste and I want that paste to be just a little bit thinner. So you'll just take one good blueberries worth of gloss varnish to your cup and then a couple of drops of water. OK, a couple drops of water. You should get it to a paste and you want to move that pigment around. You want to scrape your cups. All right, the bottom and make sure all of it is mixed in. Once you do this, I then add just a little bit of American Floetrol to make sure all of the paint or pigment is wet. And I stir, 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 stir to my heart's content. All right, at that point, we are then ready to add more Floetrol to bring it up in volume and more like a paint and this is where we need to look at how to thicken it up because it will be a bit thin but you can see now it has got a lush uh body and volume similar to any other paint that i have mixed up this is just a paint no pigment and you can see it is still the same now your pigments will be slightly thinner most of the time but it shouldn't vary that much and it won't affect the outcome of your pour so here are three tricks to thicken your paint without affecting the color very, very much. All right. So if you want to thicken your paints and this works for paints as well, I'm just focused on pigments because I get a lot of emails and questions. Um, a, this is a super heavy gloss medium by Liquitex. You can see that I use it quite frequently. This will thicken up your paints. Now, there are other gloss mediums that you can use, but I feel like you get a better bang for your buck. This is super thick and you'll be surprised how little it takes in order to thicken up your paint. So 
because it is so thick, you need to mix it in very early on in your process. The longer you wait, the more volume to add, you add, the harder it's going to be for this to mix into your paints. So after adding that little bit of flow trial to make it um, a paint, you should have, you know, about that much paint pigment mixture. This is where you want to add your gloss gel. OK, it's going to thicken it up and then you can add your pouring medium, which in this place is flow trial to the rest to bring it up to volume without having the chunks all over the place. All right. So the same applies to the iridescent medium. This is another way that you can thicken up your your paints. And I will say that every iridescent medium is a different consistency. This by Artist Loft is the thickest I have found. I will say that over the years, this product has changed and the flakes have gotten so much larger versus when it came in a regular Artist Loft tube. So beware that it will not change your color much, but it will give it a shimmery glittery effect and it has some silver underbase to it but it's very minimal and change and this will quickly thicken up your pigments all right so for the other trick and this i really love when we're working with our uh, color shifts and our iridescence uh for example like macaw you can see this is it looks white and it does it you know the colors do shift but when we want to thicken it up adding any type of color really changes the property and the color of it so for example here um this is my crescendo and flamingo mix i can also use a iridescent color shift paint as well so this is by amsterdam and you can see the color is very similar will it change the color of your pigment um it will, but not, I mean, it will, but it's not going to be drastic because it complements. And quite frankly, these are about the same colors. OK, it's going to complement your paint. It is working with your paint. It is not opaque, so it want, will not take over, but it's going to thicken your paints up. So these are three great ingredients that you can use uh, with the paint because it is a paint. You can mix it in a little bit later in your mixing process and it won't be as hard to mix in. This is going to be the easiest. However, I also don't want to waste it either, like using a whole, whole lot of paint uh, to thicken it up. Um, so, you know, you could use a combination of the three. In this case, the only thing that I've used is the super gloss. Uh, heavy gel because I wanted you to see these TLP pigments on their own without any additions. And so now we're going to use this to pour out and you can see the consistency is very nice. It leaves a little bit of a mound on a mound. And like I said, it's a little bit thinner, but not by much than my paints. So now we're going to pour it out. All right. These are my colors. Once again, I will go through them at the end of the video. All right, so we're going to start off with a little bit of white. This does not have any satin enamels in it, in case you're wondering. And remember, what goes in first comes out last. Added this color as, as a last minute addition for some contrast. This is my Flamengo and Crescendo mix. This is Unicorn.
And I'm going to add a little surprise. So this is another white that I mixed up. This does include my satin enamels. So we should get some clouds just on the exterior of our painting today. All right, so check out my beautiful cup. I'm going to put some of this purple down here. I'm going to end things off with a bit of a ring pour. Okay, I'm super thrilled with the results so far. All of my colors are showing up and we have lots of fingerlings. Remember I told you we'd get some sales? So there they are. And let's get down for a close-up before we spin this out. All right, check this out. There's my white, and we even have some cells in our pink color, coral, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So now is when I take some inventory. I look to see um, what I want to keep, what I don't like, all that good stuff. I'm going to spread out my paint a little bit. Now, right now the composition is perfect. So this is not necessary, but I want to go ahead and get my paint closer to the edge because when I go to spin, it's really hard to dictate what's going to come off first. It's the weight of the paint, where it is, if you're spinner is slightly off centered or if your canvas is slightly off centered one side will go faster than the other 
What I do know is I want to keep this because I think it's going to open up as well as these fingerlings and stuff like that. This is really gorgeous, but I can lose a little bit of it once we get to spinning and still see this gradient change. I'm going to do some tilting slowly but surely. And we're going to bring it back. Because right now, my paint at the bottom is closest to the edge. And I fear that that is what's going to come off first. This was all done in uh, real time so you can see how slow I'm going. Um, I will speed it up in just a second. All right, so I've spread out my paint a bit, and now I am ready to spin. We're going to do a gentle spin to start things off. You can see it's quickly expanding, and that top part went off, which is fine. Okay, let's slow it down just a little bit. That was too much of a spin. Love this. Now, I'm going to torch this purple in efforts to bring some more clouds up. Okay, and now we're going to do one more spin. All right. So off camera, I did a little more tilting to remove that focal point from the center even more uh, because it gives more interest, especially since I don't have a ton of contrast that, you know, it just adds more depth to the piece. So you're less focused on there being um, contrast in which there is, but not like some of my other paintings, but it kind of just balances it out. So I love the purple and the itty bitty cells that we got with our torching. I wish I had more of that dark purple that would have really added to the contrast, but I'm in love with the pink. Absolutely.
Ladies and gentlemen, these are the dried results. And you can see we actually got some of our contrast back as it dried darker. Now, I will tell you, these new TLPs are popping. It's hard to see on camera. But if you look close, you can see this glowing effect that we are getting from our unicorn and then our mix between the crescendo and flamingo. It is really, really pretty in person. Um, I'll show you some of the edges. So like literally this piece glows. You can see at this angle how it changes. It is like spectacular. Um, I had a goober, which I like the effect that it brought, but I'm definitely going to have to resin this to take away. I love the way that the pink and crescendo is broken up with the cells that expanded. Um, and so I am really, really happy now with this piece. There's another angle for you. And I can't wait to um, for it to find a new home. So if you were interested, let me know. Love the little cells here. <laughs> and if you want to see how this video comes out, you'll have to click the link right here. Remember, family, do every single thing with love. Treat your friends, your family, and even your enemies with love. Have an amazing, productive day. Peace.